Blackmagic just announced a bunch of new products, and here are my takeaways on what I saw. Of these, the Blackmagic camera app, the ability to take your iPhone and turn it into a pocket cinema camera, cool, but I would actually like to see the ability to stream from this, considering their newer switchers have the ability to take in internet cameras, stream from your iPhone, have tally feedback so I can see what's on preview and program, and make this a wireless camera, or at least a camera in a pinch over ethernet instead of over HDMI. I can stream from here. The ability to take a clean HDMI out feed would also be nice from the app, considering the new iPhones now have USB-C, or you could use the old lightning to HDMI adapter. Either way, I'd love to see the ability to use your iPhone in a studio camera not ideal, but in a pinch, if you are starting out and just have a couple iPhones and want to pick up iPhones over pocket cinemas or studio cameras for whatever reason, that might be a good way to get in with the A10 minis and your iPhones and run your whole camera system and stream that way. Second thing I noticed was the new Blackmagic Micro Studio Camera 4K Gen 2. This is basically the exact same Micro Studio from back in the day, except now with the new sensor that matches their studio cameras. The older sensor was pretty bad in low light, uh, so you had to light your subject really well just to even use this thing. Now with the new sensor, it'll match your studio cameras, match all your color, but the smaller form factor allows you to mount it and put it in places you just can't put your larger studio camera, like the Ronin camera gimbals, as you've seen me do in the past, by mounting the camera on the Ronin and turning it into a Blackmagic PTZ camera. Then when you add the ability to do active track where it can track the subject, this is the ideal camera for this type of rig. And now with the newer Ronins, you could actually go with a smaller Ronin and do the exact same thing. Overall, making your whole camera set up smaller if I had known this was coming out I probably would have gone with this over using the studio cameras on our Ronin rigs that are currently hanging from the ceiling on motorized arms we love them they look great it's very impressive but these cameras would have been a lot easier to rig up and mount and would be less weight as well the only downside I see with these cameras is the fact that they are using a smaller BNC connector versus the standard BNC so you do have to make sure you have those adapter cables on you when you're a travel freelancer like myself you want to be able to pack as light as possible but still have everything with you and these micro studio cameras might definitely replace my larger studio cameras when I travel because I can put my exact same lenses, they're gonna look the same, I'm gonna be able to use my servo lenses with them. The new Micro Studio might also make a really good wireless rig. If you take that USB-C, convert it to ethernet, and then put a router or something wireless on it, you might be able to get camera control over Wi-Fi. The ability to do this means you could also use the SDI or HDMI outs to plug into a wireless transmitter you'd put a wireless receiver over by your switcher and now you have a completely controllable wireless camera that would also have tally now whoever is operating this wireless camera can see whether they are on preview or program and someone else can be controlling all the settings of their camera so they don't have to pay attention to it your cameraman can just focus on the shots that they want and if it's a servo lens someone else could be doing the zoom control the focus the coloring the exposure Every setting about the camera could be controlled remotely in this case. This might be something I have to test and build out. We'll see. So overall, I'm excited about this product, and I'll at least be picking up one, if not two. And as expected, they did release an 80 by 80 video hub. This is a 4K video router. A lot of the larger studios need this. The smaller ones and the everyday live streamers aren't really needing an 80 by 80, but the larger studios with all of their ATEM switchers, Ultimates, web presenters, multi-viewers, etc., they are maxing out their constellations with their 40 by 40 video hub. So having an 80 by 80 is really helpful for them. With all of that, they also released some new advanced panels. These panels are a lot like the one of me. Funny thing is they're actually shallower. They're, they're not as deep, but they have more buttons. So they have a 20 version and a 30 version 
one ME advanced panel so you can still switch between your four different MEs if your switcher allows it but now you get up to 20 buttons with a shift so that's 40 inputs that you could click from from the advanced panel what I really like about these panels is not just more buttons but the multiple displays that it has so it still only has the one joystick I would have loved two so I can kind of control each super source a little bit differently but at least the two to three different displays on these guys allow me to adjust a DVE or a keyer on one display while adjusting a super source box or look over on the other that's really helpful or even during setup when I'm playing with super sources and matching box sizes I don't have to remember because I can have one box up on one display and a different one up and start matching their settings that way so that is really nice that these have multiple displays even though it's just a one ME advanced panel they did talk a lot about DaVinci Resolve and how it integrates with the new camera app and being able to file share over the cloud and speed up your workflow. But I'm not a DaVinci Resolve editor. I use Final Cut Pro. So those things weren't as applicable to me. So they also updated the studio camera 4K plus Gen 2. Now, instead of just an HDMI, it also has SDI ports. So that's great for camera control and things like that when you are upgrading from maybe an HDMI switcher to an SDI switcher. It's not that far off from a 4K Pro studio camera. The only things it's missing is the Ethernet ports and the XLR ports. So I guess if those aren't important to you, you can get the cheaper version and save a little bit of money. But I would highly suggest just going with the Pro model for a bunch of reasons. I recently started using the Ethernet port on the cameras with the studio converters and being able to run one cable from where my switcher is all the way to the camera, especially because it's now hanging from the ceiling on a motorized arm. This made it a lot easier. And if I just had this model, I would have had to run three cables to run the camera on a moving gimbal. So just having the one cable via ethernet is really helpful for not only video in and out, but also power. And they built another version of the Pocket Cinema. They call this the Cinema Camera 6K. And it's all about the internals of the camera. Again, not a big interest for me personally, but for a lot of the cinematographers, they're probably pretty excited about this. It is the exact same form factor as their other Pocket Cinema 6Ks. So all the accessories still work. And this last one was a subtle mention, but they made an update to the web presenter. So now when you are streaming to custom RTMP platforms, platforms, you can now type the RTMP link directly into the web presenter. You don't have to go to your XML file and create a new destination and it kind of a big work around that way. They let you type it right into the web presenter, which is good because I use the web presenter as my main encoder. If I need backup encoders, I'll use an A10 mini or something like that. But now that we can type these directly in, it is making it easier to stream to all those custom platforms for your corporate clients. Although in most cases, we still use Vimeo. We find it is a great backup, instant record, instant playback, things like that. So most of the time we're streaming to Vimeo and then we embed that Vimeo player onto the client's platform of choice. This is a really simple workflow for us. We know it always works. We can be monitoring it on our end and the odds of Vimeo having a problem versus the client's platform having a problem, uh, Vimeo is usually a lot larger than the client's platform. So we know where the issue really lies when we are having it. The downside is we do have a little bit more of a delay. So if delay is your biggest thing, then go ahead and stream directly to the client's platform. And now you can even use SRT encoding because the web presenters now support it. So that is my take on all the new updates and products from Blackmagic.